Hi everyone, this is Mike. And today we're going to do a gentle practice. So the theme is about balance, which means all kinds of balance. We've got our right and left, our hot and cold, our upper and lower, our inside versus our outside. We're going to try to touch on all of these things today. Now, being a gentle class, I have a couple things to say before we begin. It's really great if you have a lot of the standard props. And if you don't have, you know, real yoga props, that's fine. Anything around the house will do. Today, I will use a block, all right, and a strap at the end of class. And then a blanket, too, which is usually where I will uh, show you how to use it to sit up and make things less straining and stressful. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and sit on it. And I sit on the edge of it, OK? And what that does is it gives my hips, my hip flexors here a little bit of ease, all right? And that's always what we want when we are in a seated position. The other thing is to know that the word gentle, it is relative. And something that may be, feel gentle for one person may be very challenging for another. And so I try to offer some options. The most important thing is that you practice with the body that you showed up with today. Make the poses match your body, not the other way around. And if you like to practice to music, scroll down and find links for playlists on Spotify and Apple Music. Let's begin by becoming centered. So if you haven't already, make sure that you're sitting nice and uh, feeling like the spine has found its sweet spot. Again, balanced front to back and side to side. And let your hands just rest, resting on the knees or on the legs so that the spine can sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to draw ourselves inward as we begin. And the first thing we always want to do is take ourselves into a nice, smooth pattern of breathing, beginning, though, with noticing just what your natural breath is doing. Check in with your body. How balanced do you feel? Don't make any judgments of what you find. Just go ahead and notice the quality of your inhale and the quality of your exhale. And notice where they might be different and begin to bring them into balance, meaning we're going to take about a, an inhale that's about two thirds of your total breathing capacity. Nice inhale. And the same with your exhale. So your inhales and exhales will be the same length and the same volume. And hopefully feeling like it becomes almost like a smooth rhythm of a wheel turning. And you might even imagine that you are inhaling for a count of four and exhaling for a count of four. So once we establish this, I want to do a breathing technique that will help us to build a little bit of energy before we start moving. Once you've got that rhythm of breath into that nice even four to four, we're going to um, do a rhythm that increases our inhales three parts one part at a time so let's just maybe start really gently as you inhale inhale a third of your lung capacity and fill in your chest pause briefly inhale another third and feel the diaphragm expand pause briefly inhale the remaining third let the belly expand pause briefly and then give a nice long exhale and we'll just try that again Inhale one third at the chest and pause. Only a pause that feels right for you. Another third in the diaphragm there, low ribs, pause. Final third, let the belly expand, pause. And then exhale, just kind of compress, let it all come out. Feel relaxed. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, chest one third. Diaphragm one third. And if pausing is stressful, don't do it. And belly one third smooth exhale and you don't have to be in time with my cue inhale chest one-third diaphragm one-third 
belly the remaining. And smooth exhale. Good. And then let your breath return to just that really even balanced breath we call one-to-one -one breathing. Nice. One more breath here. Taking ourselves mindfully into the body and away from our daily thoughts and cares. Good. We're going to begin our class on all fours. If that is bothersome to your knees, please give yourself extra padding. You can put um, the, the blanket under your knees. Otherwise, remove all of your props for now. And we will begin with our cat stretches. Put your hands under your shoulders. Square your knees over your hips, your knees under your hips, right? And then we'll inhale, feel like you're kind of pulling and lengthening the front side of the body. Lift your heart, lift your chin a little bit. And when you exhale, press yourself back into child's pose. We'll do this a few times through. Inhale, pull on the hands to draw yourself forward. And it's like you're arching your back so that the belly is low. And then as you exhale, tuck the navel in and the chin in and you're arching your back so that the belly is high, all right? A few more times through, inhale, please move with your breath. That's gonna keep us present in our practice, okay? Exhale, the hips tilt. You're surrendering your forehead and your forearms as well. One more time, nice inhale, smooth movement, come through. Shoulders are wide, exhale and press back. And let's go ahead and pause for just a moment, surrender. Forearms, forehead. Now, if this doesn't feel right for you, please by all means sit with the hips higher and put a support, fist or block, under your forehead. Anything to relieve the knees and hips. And know that you can come to a child's pose anytime you need to during your practice. All right. Good, let's come back on up to all fours. Now, if your wrists experience strain, you can always also go to a fist. Okay, so what we're going to do is I want you to take your right leg out to the side, straight out to the side. So it looks like that, see to your side like that. And your left hand is under your left shoulder. Your right arm will open up and then you're gonna exhale and thread down through to the left side. Good, inhale, so that foot on the right side is flat. Exhale and thread through. Just starting with some nice uh, warming through the spine with a little gentle twist and exhale twist. Good, let's do that one more time. You'll notice you can open pretty, pretty widely to the right side, but not so much to the left, that's fine. Good, and the next time that you come up, let's let that be your last and put your hands down underneath you. Take now that right leg. See if you can drag it back behind you, reach it way back behind you, and even bring it off the floor if you want. Now again, gentle being relative, you choose. Anything you want, you could stay here, or you could also involve the left arm in this. So you want to press the floor away, lift up, and then use the backside of your body to really bring it away from the floor and reach the fingertips far away from those heels and back. Good, fill the space behind your leg. All right, let's bring that back down, square it up. And then we're gonna take the left leg out to the side, flatten your foot. Right hand is under right shoulder. Inhale and open up. Good, and exhale and twist. So this is a thread the needle, it's a little more open. You'll feel a little more twist on one side than the other because of this leg out to the side, right? Good. Inhale, open and shine up. Exhale, come on through. And let's make this the last one. Inhale, come on up and exhale. Go ahead and put those hands back down. Draw this leg back behind you now. Keep it on the floor or lift it away. Good glute activation. Right arm is gonna come as well for a spinal balance. So again, lots of lefts and rights here, balancing ourselves out, bringing our, our strength into alignment. Good, let's go ahead and put those down. And then, I wanna do a little flow here. Let's go ahead and sit back into your child's pose, and we'll do a little lower vinyasa series. We won't do sun salutations in this, but we'll do kinda of like the lower part and the upper part separately. You inhale and rise up. Now as you exhale, you're going to touch your chin and chest. Now, put your whole body on the floor, snake through, and give me that baby cobra. Draw your shoulders back. In a baby cobra, Make sure those shoulders are shrugged but relaxed back enough, all right? And you're lifting your heart. 
Keep your arms in close to the side. Now, when you exhale, draw your navel back, back into child's pose. Let's do that a few times. Inhale, lift up, and then exhale. Go ahead, touch your chin and chest down. Inhale, come through, baby cobra. And then exhale again, draw that navel back for that child's pose. One more time, inhale, nice smooth four, four by four breath, right? Uh, exhale, touch your chin and chest. Inhale that baby cobra, again, shoulders back. Exhale, and child's pose, beautiful. Let's come back on up to your tabletop, and we are gonna work our way to standing. So if you want to just maybe take a step, Help yourself, tuck your back toes, step in toward the top of the mat. How about we pause and forward fold for a moment? Just let yourself be kind of rag doll. Nod your head yes and affirm your positive intentions. Maybe you like to sway side to side and cast off anything that doesn't serve you in this moment. All right, just allowing yourself to be loose and find your center and let gravity kind of uh, take a little pull on that spine and make it long. Put your hands on your uh, hips, bend your knees, lead with your heart to come on up, arms overhead, and then exhale. Good. We'll do a few things here standing. So the first thing is called Tadaka Mudra. I'm going to uh, turn so you can see me a little bit better. You can stay perfectly aligned. We'll interlace the fingers, inhale, and then you shine those up, okay? Palms away. Exhale, and then just let those come down. Inhale, interlace the hands, and then palms up to the sky. So this whole time, too, you're in your nice Tadasana alignment. What's that? That's your mountain pose. You got space between your feet, right? Micro bend in the knees. Your navel is lightly engaged, and you're feeling really tall. All right, inhale up. Now let's hold, hold this one up. Hold and reach. So now you're pressing down into the floor and reaching up high. Keep your, uh, your chin tucked in sufficiently. Shoulders try to relax a little bit, but it's a full body stretch. Now let the hands go and open your shoulders back. Hold the sky. Now from here, Really letting those arms be wide. Inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, relax your shoulders. Maybe you need to keep a little activity here in the area of the navel. Maybe a little bit in the glutes. Good. Now we're going to do just a little flow to keep those shoulders opening. Arms come down. I'll show you here in the front. Put the backs of your hands together. Inhale up through the center. And exhale, turn those shoulders open. Good. Inhale. So this kind of helps us. This hand uh, motion helps us put uh, some uh, attention into our shoulders, right? Backs of the hands together. Good. Let's just do one more. And notice the circular motion of the shoulders that have a lot of mobility if we can um, if we can allow them to be that way. All right. From here, I want to do just a little bit of, um, I'm going to stay facing this way. Let's go ahead and have a little bit of a sit into a chair and then exhale, stand up. Again, space between the feet. I'm going to add something onto this. So if it doesn't throw you off, as you exhale, draw one knee up. All right. Inhale, sit. And then exhale, draw the other knee up. Doing that a few times, we'll make sure that we always get even rights and lefts. Yeah, theme is balance. We got to get even rights and lefts. Inhale, come through. Good. Now, this will be the last one. So let's just go ahead and stand up squarely. And then I'll show you from the side. We're going to do a different chair movement. Inhale, arms come up. And you're going to circle around to the side. Circle around to the side, so you're twisting. And then you come down into a chair. Sweep. Inhale up. We'll get it. And then exhale, twist to the other side. Open. Circle the arms. Inhale, come up. We we'll sweep and circle each side. Good. Sit. Inhale up the center. Exhale. Let's do one more cycle. This, I'm... Um, Normally when you do this, you want to start start right, start left, and then you'll know that once you've completed a left, that's the last one. Now right here, please take your arms to come behind you. So what you might do is you might hold onto your wrists or your forearms. 
But let's go ahead and remind ourselves to open the shoulders one more time. Lift your heart, lift your chin. Make sure you have some space between your feet. Now, take an inhale and exhale. Start putting your belly on your legs. We're gonna come halfway down. Put your belly on your legs and maybe uh, sit your booty back a little bit. All right, now if you feel okay here, you can take this into a forward fold. Otherwise, just stay here. Or if your shoulders still feel stressed, let it go. All right, otherwise you take this into the forward fold fully. Bring your weight a little bit forward into the fronts of those feet. It feels dangerous, but that's going to make you more balanced, all right? It's not just um, either the front side or the back side holding you there. You want both sides to be doing some work. Draw your navel in and up. Now let's gently let the hands release to the hips. Bend your knees a lot. Pick up your heart. And again, we'll return to a nice mountain pose. Take a cooling breath here. Press down through the feet to lift up. And from here, let's just do one more round through that. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bring those arms behind us. Now hold the opposite wrist that you did last time, or forearm. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, let's only come halfway down. Put your belly on your legs. Don't be afraid to bend your knees a lot, all right? Take a breath here. Inhale, let the pressure equalize. And then exhale, take that into forward fold. Again, if this is too intense for you, release something. You can keep knees bent. Take another couple breaths in forward fold. Inhaling to make the spine long. Exhaling. Make sure the backs of the thighs are long as well. Hands to your hips. Inhale and rise. Nice. And exhale back to Tadasana. All right, we're going to do a few standing poses next. So uh, starting at the top of the mat, let's just go ahead and step the left foot back. We're going to have a version, any version of Warrior One that works for you today. So in Warrior One, pretend you have two lanes on your mat here and put your feet on both lanes. Now, a lot of people, I see it in class, they just immediately go for the feet on one line. Most standing poses kind of want you to have both those feet in two lines. Why? Because of our hips, all right? So, and then turn towards the front. So when you bend that front knee, it should be going towards the center of that front foot, all right? This needn't be stepping back so far. I'm going to keep this gentle today. And then let's go ahead, inhale, option, a classic warrior one has arms up, and then exhale, bend into that front leg, but you could also have hands at heart center. Maybe even you feel your heart lift up to touch those thumbs, all right? The shoulders are very forward. The hips are probably swiveled out at an angle, but my shoulders are forward, all right? Hands either way. Both feet should feel like they're making good contact. And if you still feel a little stressed on the knee, maybe you can take your front foot and shimmy it a little wider too, okay? What do you do about the burn? <laughs> well, I did call this gentle. Now, gentle doesn't mean I'm not going to apply some heat, okay? We still want the body to adapt to some stresses, good stresses, right? Um, but if you needed to, you could inhale uh, straight and, and, and break. Exhale, come back in, okay. So I've talked us through about a bunch of uh, breaths already. So let's inhale and straighten the legs. Exhale and open ourselves up into a uh, nice wide arms. We're going to do a triangle. So let's go ahead before you do this, put your block by your front foot. And let's go nice and long. Now triangle, those feet are still on the two lanes. All right, check in case they moved. Let's inhale as you start reaching forward from your right hand your right hip should start coming back. So it's like someone's pulling on my right hand and someone's pulling back on my right hip a little bit. So feel that, feel that as you reach, good. That means this left hip is coming with you a little more. Now triangle, you could definitely do it high up here or from the shin, or now we've got this block. Now that's the lowest, it may be the most challenging. Arm up, so you know shin might be better. And we're gonna flow this. So feel stable. Inhale, the arm comes overhead, and you look up. Exhale, the arm comes back to the side, and you look down. So again, inhale, arm overhead. Exhale, and look down. And smooth this breath out. 
into the nice rhythm that we started with in the beginning of class. And we do things about five times, so if you are okay with it, you could go overhead with that too. That's a little bit more core work. Exhale, look down. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Now what you'll do is you'll inhale and take this left hand all the way down to find the block. Put your right hand on your right hip, and we're going to do the revolved version. Okay, so... Maybe you want to start, you know, turn towards the front of the mat even more. Put the block right under your shoulder. Take your right hand and guide that hip back. Inhale to lengthen your spine nice and long. And then exhale, start turning from your navel uh, to the right and your ribs and your chin. Your hand might rest on your back, your low back. Some people will like to stack the arms, but that could stress your shoulder. So please, again, practice in the body that you showed up in. Maybe next time you practice, something will feel very different, more able. But be present with what you have now. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and bring this right hand back to the block. And then just go ahead and come on up and then face, uh, come wide. Come fully wide. All right. Maybe you like to, well, let's see. It just kind of depends on your setup where that's going to be, but we'll need it for the other side. And we're going to do something called moonflowers. All right. So that was a little heat building. Let's do something. Turn your knees and toes out. It's called moonflowers. That's just a really slow flow. Inhale. We're going to make a big um, round shape with the movement of our arms. Inhale, shape of the moon. Nice. Exhale. Inhale. Every time you inhale, you straighten the legs, press into the feet. Exhale. And then bend. Let those knees come out towards the, towards the toes. Inhale. Good. Exhale. Now, let's go ahead. Inhale, stay up. And then exhale, heel, toe, everything, come on in. And we're going to do a balance. Okay, so keeping with the gentleness, if you need to touch a wall for the balance, please do. All right? We're going to try and keep um, do a simple kind of uh, one-legged chair. What we're going to do is you're going to put your weight into your right foot. Okay? balance. If you can look out a window at something far away, that's the best way um, to also keep your visual focus. Now, what we're doing is flexing our left leg and putting that over our right knee and then sitting. You can keep hands at your hips or bring them heart center, okay? Whatever works for you. And then bring yourself inward back to the space of your breath. Smooth inhale, and smooth exhale. And balance can be really challenging for a lot of us, especially if we are out of practice with it. It takes <laughs> just that, practice, right? Try to find your stillness in our poses. That is a virtue. All right, so let's go ahead, rise on up. Try to come out of your balance with, with intention, all right, with control. Beautiful. Maybe you want to give some love to that ankle, a little turn, all right? Nice. So depending on how your mat is, you're going to have your left foot forward. I'm just going to go ahead and turn. I'm just going to go ahead and turn so that my left foot is forward, my right foot is back. But you got to check. Remember our two lanes? Remember our two lanes? When the front leg bends, it goes towards those front, middle of the foot. Don't have to step way back. Our hips are probably open. This is warrior one, and our shoulders pretty uh, front focused. So many options. Inhale, you can have your hands up. You can have them at heart center. But do challenge yourself, all right? So there's a principle in yoga called tapas. It's not nothing to do with food. It is about austerity and the sort of heat that we apply to our lives that is heat that is meant to be transformative, not destructive, okay? So when we do something like this, it's transforming us into a stronger being. Physically, yes, but here too. So if I can, you know, mentally be cool while this is struggling, off the mat, I'm going to be able to do that too, maybe, okay? A little bit more, okay. Good. 
sometimes I talk a lot just to distract you from the work we're doing. <laughs> All right. Triangle. Again, you probably want this by your front foot for the gentle, gentle work today. When you reach, remember, it's like someone pulling your arm, but then it's like someone pulling on your left hip as well. So imagine sort of that two di directions. You can stay high, you can come shin, you can come block, and then whatever you choose today, I'll just stay shin, but we inhale and we're gonna look up to that arm, and then we exhale and we look down. So make sure both of your feet are feeling really um, stable. Inhale, the arm can go long if you want. Exhale, and we're flowing this five times, okay? Inhale up, and exhale. So getting some neck work in here too, as we uh, challenge ourselves to look, but if that makes you dizzy, you don't do it. What's the answer, what's my answer to any question of, it hurts, or you know, it makes me feel unstable. It's always going to be don't do that or do one of the other, you know, lighter things. Take your hand back down and find your block. Okay. We're going to do the revolved version of this. And it probably means that this right hip is going to start because I'm going to start moving this way. So notice that as I start moving that way, I want to bring this hip with me. Okay. Put the block right under your shoulder. Left hand hooks into the left hip. Inhale, lengthen your spine, okay? And then exhale, start turning your navel to the left. And then everything else to the left. Hand can rest at the sacrum or shine up. And again, find your stillness. Pressing equally into both feet. It's almost like when you press into the feet, you send a, a line of energy up the, um, the inner, inner legs that form your really strong triangle. Take one more nice breath here. Again, gentle if you need it. Gentler if you need it. And then let's go ahead and put that hand back down on the block and carefully let yourself come on up. Face the side one more time and we'll heel toe. We're gonna do the other balance, all right? so. It was the ankle over knee. Don't rush into a balance. Find your wall if you need it. Um, another thing I see in class is people just go, I say balance, and they're like, huh, and then they're like this, okay? We're learning to breathe into things. Step into your left foot. Have a breath and make sure you feel good and grounded, all right? There's no rush, especially in this class. Flex the other, maybe an inhale, and then maybe with an exhale, cross over. That's my number one recommendation. Every move corresponds to a steady inhale, exhale, so that you um, are doing it not only mindfully, but I find that on the exhales in a balance, it really helps me to bring um, focus and stillness and you're sitting as low as you like. I wasn't sitting super low on the other side, but the lower you sit, the more hip opening you start to feel, the more that knee comes out wide, okay? Beautiful. Flexing the foot to protect this knee. And our back is, is up in a chair-like alignment. Oh my gosh, let's go ahead, inhale and exhale undo, come out with intention and maybe give some love to that ankle. Nice. So we're going to move on to the floor. So go ahead, maybe you like to just kind of come to the top of the mat, inhale and take the laziest dive on down. All right, and coming to the knees. And we're gonna actually come onto our backs for our next piece. This will have an option as well. So I'm going to use the block, but if you want to use a blanket, that works too. We're gonna to put our hips up a little bit. And this could be something that is, if you know legs up the wall, you could have your hips up against the wall and your legs high, all right? It's also nice if you're at the wall to then have something under those hips a little bit, like so. Okay, let me say one thing about raising the hips. 
Ladies, if you are in your moon cycle, it is not recommended that you put your hips above uh, the rest of your body and have yourself inverted like that. It can it can mess with things in your cycle. Um, and if, if anyone has any hypertension or eye issues where that added pressure to the upper body is going to be um, an issue, then stay with something a lot simpler. You could stay with something like happy baby, like so, just drawing the knees in, or to the uh, soles of the feet, okay? Otherwise, let me show you what I plan to do today is Viparita Karani, which is the inverted body, and you find the sweet spot with your hips on the block so that your legs can balance up above you. Now, is there a little bit of work going on here to keep these balanced? Sure, sure, but it shouldn't feel like a struggle, okay? And if it feels like a struggle, then let's go ahead. You can, again, come to the wall. We're going to be here for, you know, a, a sec, a, a hot second. Um, but you don't want this block to dig into yourself either, so you that's another thing. You're finding the sweet spot for the, for the block. I'm even finding it here. Um, so that it doesn't dig and I feel like I can just let things float. And then you take your arms out to the side with a slight bend in the elbows, okay? And just let yourself experience the energetics of an inversion. So think about it. All day, well, not all day, most of our waking hours are spent when the body is in the opposite direction and our legs and our feet really do bear the weight, literally, and gravity of everything. And so this is a lovely way to balance out some of that pressure in the body. Again, as long as it's not causing stress, not a bad thing to just put ourselves into the opposite mode once in a while. Smooth breathing. Here at the end of class, not necessarily the end, the second half of class, we uh, are holding things a little bit more as well, finding ourselves in stillness and letting uh, the body relax into uh, poses for relaxation's sake, uh, as well as uh, flexibilities, okay? So let's go ahead, when you're ready, I like to put my toes down and then lift your hips to remove the block and then one vertebra at a time, come on out of those. And then we're gonna come onto our fronts. So if, you, if it feels gentle for you to chin in, hug your chin in and just rock on up, go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna come onto our fronts. Okay, so turn around and <laughs> we're gonna do a plank. So it doesn't seem like a gentle thing to do, does it? But we're gonna do the gentlest plank. Come onto all fours, now that I told you to come down. Come onto all fours. So it starts from all fours, but just walk yourself out. So this is the gentlest plank. Now you gotta walk a little forward or you're not doing any work. In class, I'll see people I'll say, go to a plank. And then all these people are still right here. Yeah, I'm doing, no. <laughs> come on forward. You gotta get to a point where you start to feel like, ooh, ooh. I'm doing a little bit of work to stay there, all right? You can see yourself in a mirror. You want this body flat, flat between your shoulders and your knees, okay? Draw the shoulders back and wide. If it stresses your, you know, your wrists, go ahead and take fists, but draw your navel in and up, navel in and up. Draw the crown of your head far away from your knees, okay? If it helped, you could also, you know, tuck your toes, and just hold this, drawing the navel in. When you draw the navel in, you kind of naturally bring that tailbone to point uh, towards the um, towards the, the knees as well, okay? Good balance there, front and back, strengthening front and back. Good, good. And a little bit of shake is not a bad thing, all right? Um, it's your body learning to become stronger. All right, let's go ahead. Now put yourself down on the mat. And we're gonna do one more thing for the, um, for the back body. Point your toes and put your tops of your feet into the earth and we'll do a version of locust. 
if you have low back issues, please, please um, honor that. Honor that and don't go too extremely or too high into anything. Today's locust, you can start with your hands at your shoulders, shrug the shoulders back, and keep those arms rather tucked into your sides. Now, when you lift on up, you are, I would like you to think you're using more of your glutes in your back and bringing your navel in and up than pressing. So when you press a lot, that's a cobra. A locust is a lot more about body weight. So even try that, take your hands away and see how, so it's more about where am I with my own body strength, okay? So always can have a little bit of help. You can slide these back, kind of, I like that because it kind of draws my heart forward. Again, my arms stay close to the body. Or if you feel okay, you could also just put those hands flat behind you. Open, open your heart in front. And try not to, another thing that's easy is to let your head just kind of sag. Your neck should be a natural extension of the rest of your spine. So you're also not craning to look up. You're maybe looking toward the front of your mat, someplace in there. Good, good. Yes, if you felt okay with this, you could definitely add the feet too. But again, gentle is relative and everyone that's uh, practicing this right now is going to want something a little different. So take one more nice long inhale. And a longer exhale, squeeze and hold. Oh my gosh, yes. Now, now everyone, um, let's just go ahead and turn your head to the side for a sec. And your arms to the side and rest. Go ahead and just stay resting there, please. And feel your breathing helping to open your ribs. Expanding away from the floor and the low back kind of feeling a little space come in between those vertebra. Pick up your head and then turn to the other side as well for a couple of breaths. Again, theme is balance and we always want to make sure that if we do something on the right, we do it on the left. And then let's do a yin pose for our backs as well. Bring your elbows out in front of you. So we're gonna do a sphinx. Now, we were just practicing squeezing and lifting. This one is about surrendering, complete surrender. So the gentlest version of this, you see what's happening here. The further my, sh my elbows are out in front of me, the less curve in my back. That can be the gentlest version, okay? But if you're fine with it, they obviously can come in as much as under your shoulders. But again, let's not tense. Let's not tens tense in the Sphinx. Let's let everything melt as if our body was like the canvas of a tent. Let your shoulders bear the weight. Let your belly feel like it's it's got weight and it's drawing you down. And relax, relax. See if you're holding any tension in the back and relax. Again, those elbows could be forward. Just because I drew mine back doesn't mean you need to. And if your neck feels okay, you could surrender that too and just give a little neck stretch. Just relax. So the head is heavy and the belly is heavy and the shoulders are like the, uh, the tent poles of the tent. This is the gentlest back bend, just sort of maintained by the position of our body. Also puts our back into a different orientation. If we sit all day, not a bad idea to, again, we're gonna balance out by putting it into the opposite mode and strengthen. All right, let's go ahead and come on up. Press yourself up onto your knees. Now, if you needed to, we're gonna come on to, the, if you really um, would like, you know, knee pad, you could add padding like so with your um, blanket or extra on your mat. And let's just do a few thunderbolt flows. This is gonna prepare us for our uh, twisting. So we inhale, lift, and then you exhale, and you come back and you sweep your hands back to your tailbone. And maybe you come down, you know, part way. Just be aware that we're sort of going, we're going upwards and downwards, which can, you know, make you dizzy if you're not watching out for yourself. Or you can keep going further. Now what I'll do here is add a twist, inhale up, exhale, you hold your right wrist and you look right, okay? 
Inhale. And then exhale and look left. Please try to keep this in a really slow flow. Being now towards the end of class even more, we don't want to generate a bunch of energy. We've already done that. We want to save it. We want to uh, put it to good use. Contain it. Inhale on up. Last one. And then I'm holding left and looking left. Good. And then that's our last one. And let's come to seated. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate for us today what it's like to use the, uh, the blanket for a seated pose. If you find that it is challenging for you to, uh, to just kind of hold your seat, sit up. You'll find a world of difference, and I'll demonstrate it today. I'm going to sit just on the edge. And we're going to start, uh, we're going to do a twist here. <sighs> Makes me able to sit up tall a lot more easily. We're going to bend our right leg and extend the left, right? So we're gonna keep it simple today, <laughs> version of this twist. If you want, take your foot over, over the knee. And what this does is it starts to train, um, train our ability to put this knee towards the center line of the body. Also maybe remove a little bit of that, uh, the belly that's in the way, all right? So hug that in a little bit. Now, take your right arm, circle back, and place it down behind you. And then take your front arm, inhale, reach up and out. And again, keep a little bit of a hug or a bigger hug. The back hand reminds you to inhale and sit up. And the front arm reminds you to sit up and twist. So exhaling through the navel. And fix your eye gaze behind you as well. In a twist, we always try to maintain the tallest spine. And what happens? Notice what your tendency is when you come into some stillness. Does the mind begin to wander out? Or are you content with stillness? Stay in the pose, but on your next inhale, look over your front shoulder. And on your exhale, you're looking one way, twisting the other. Good. Gently come center. Uncross cross this and do just a simple uh, counter twist, just the simplest. Really brief. Just look the other way. All right. Now we're going to keep that leg long and bend the other one. This is called Janu Shirshasana. It means head to knee, but by no means do you have to put your head on your knee, all right? Let's uh, flow this a couple times. So again, scoot that hip back, make this leg really long, make this other one comfortable. Inhale, and then exhale, just go ahead and maybe fold forward, all right? Inhale one more time, two more times, all right? Exhale, fold a little forward. Now fold from your hips, okay? Inhale. And then exhale again, fold forward from the hips in line with that foot. And maybe you're going to stay here, okay? Maybe some of us are going to like using our leg or hands to our foot, but let's not start to get competitive. Let's not start to overstrain the back just for the sake of getting into a, a big stretch. And here's the first uh, place I will call out the use of a, a strap if we really feel tight in, a, in something like this, you can not stress out the back and use the strap at the heel, because that's our big uh, good anchor, at the heel to just kind of feel, feel the good lengthening. You should feel lengthening through the whole back side of the body. And surrender. Mm. 
When you come out of this, see if you can remember your tall spine. Start by leaning back from your heart, the back side of your heart, okay? So that we bring the back into beautiful alignment and come back on up. Nice. We're gonna do our other twist. So we will bend the left side, extend the right, cross over, and do anything that helps bring this knee into the midline. Maybe move the belly, sit up straight. This shouldn't, you know, this leg shouldn't take you, you know, way off balance. It should actually help you stay up. Take that left arm back behind you, right arm up and out for a little hug or a big one. Back arm reminds us to sit up tall. Front arm reminds us to be tall as we twist. And settle into your eye gaze here as well. Even though you're feeling a constriction when you twist, please try to keep your smooth breathing happening. Keep your eye gaze back. Smooth breathing, it's sometimes a challenge to do that, but that's, when, that's one of the things we're practicing. We're practicing how to be calm amidst waves, right, in our lives. Stay in the pose, but look over your front shoulder, inhale. And then you exhale, look one direction and twist the other. Good, and let's ease front. Undo the cross, and just for a second, uh, turn and give a little bit of a counter twist. And this is uh, has us set up really well for the other Janushasana, the head to knee. I like to take that hip back and make that back of that leg nice and long, okay? And orient yourself in line with that leg. Inhale here, and then exhale. Just go ahead and surrender. Again, think about your movement from, you know, not here. We're so visually focused that I always just kind of want to, <laughs> I want my head to go there. Think here. All right, inhale, come on up. <sighs> exhale, think hips, all right? Good. One more time. Exhale from the hips. Now you're as far forward as you can get from the hips. Now it's okay. There's nothing wrong now with just surrendering. Stretch the back side of the body here. With the hands on the floor, on the leg, at the foot, or again, I'll show with the strap. Enabling you to fight less with your pose, even a lot less. Your smooth breath, the inhales remind you inside to feel a little bit longer in the spine when you're inhaling. And inside, at the end of your exhale, maybe tucking your navel in. Notice how that gives you a little bit more room to fold into, maybe. And these experiences, the lengthening of the spine and the, the drawing in and finding space, may be really, really subtle. It may feel like a, a millimeter or just even something that is experienced inside, something that no one would even be able to perceive outside. But it's, it's useful to have this internal awareness. Then let's go ahead and clear our space here. One more scene and pose like so. I'm gonna to turn to the side a little bit and we're gonna do a, a variation of tortoise. It's called star or tarasana. And you put the soles of the feet together and maybe you've done bound angle where they're in close. That's an inner thigh stretch, so feel that. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk your feet out. And when you do this, put your hips out behind you Perhaps you're going to feel a little bit more on the outside of the legs instead. So again, coming forward from the hips until we kind of feel ourselves stop. 
and then surrendering forward. <laughs> and something you can do on this one too, if it, if it doesn't feel bad, is to snake your hand under your leg and hand to the top of the foot, and same thing, and you pull yourself in. So you can kind of have that, that essence of your tortoise pulling yourself into a shell. And let the forward fold and the compression of the belly soothe the nervous system. Relax, assisting your exhale. If anything feels tight in a pose ever, know that, again, you don't have to go all the way into something or, you know, all the way into something. I'm demonstrating. And tightness can be flowed in and out of. So, you know, for example, I was here and it was just too tight. Maybe I want to, you know, inhale and exhale and give my body some time. Almost any pose that we're holding can be handled in that way. Stay in the pose for one more deep inhale and a deeper exhale. And then carefully bringing those hands back out and sitting back on up. And we're going to come onto our backs. So removing that blanket if you've got it and coming onto the back. Now here I, uh, I am going to use a strap if you don't have it, anything that is strap-like will do, and you know you can hold on to your leg as well. Let's just come on back, and I'm going to start with a stretch, a nice big leg stretch. Oh, I'm going to hook this around my right ankle, and lift on up. So we already did a seated stretch like so, so hopefully we are a little bit warmed up into that. Now you could also uh, take this, um, one-handed, you know, and then let your other arm rest out to the side. But let's just go ahead and press that heel away. Now do this for a moment. Exhale and draw your nose towards your knee. Now inhale, press your heel away even more. And then exhale, let the upper body rest again. Head and shoulders rest. Now your arm might be doing a little work, but your leg is not. Experience the length. The purpose of using this strap is that so that I can make this leg long. Does it have to be way up here or close in? No, it could be out here. If that's my flexibility, that's why I'm using the strap, so I can have a long leg. Feel the difference. Feel the difference for a sec too. If you bend your leg, how much stretch do you feel here on your hamstrings? Now kick that heel out. What do you feel? So the purpose is to feel that length. So whether it's out here or up here, go for the long leg. Now if you want to, this other leg, the left, can extend and you're going to feel even more stretch. Come up the midline of those legs. Trying to relax the leg as much as possible. Letting the hand and wrist do a little of the work. Totally okay here towards the ends of class to close your eyes as well. Practice that pratyahara, that sense withdrawal, bringing yourself inward. All right, let's uh, bend your left leg again if it's not already, and then we're gonna let the uh, let the strap go. Cross your right ankle over the knee. Option A is to stay here. Press your knee wide. Option B is to thread through there, interlace, and then draw that knee in. You could even use your right elbow to sort of press the, the knee wider. And this is our reclining pigeon, our supine pigeon. And the more you draw that left knee in, the more you're going to feel that big, big stretch in the hip on the right side. So it's, it's nice. I love this stretch because you have a lot of control over... Um, your levers and how much sensation you want.
Again, trying to find stillness in your breath. In the pose, take one more deep inhale and a deeper exhale. And then let's gently set that down and we're going to switch sides. So I'm gonna find my strap again, my left ankle, my left heel, all right? Extend it on up, figure out where's my sweet spot for this. One side might be tighter than the other too. Maybe you're better on one side. Um, heel is best, want it long. Might be out here, inhale, heel high. Exhale, draw your chin up towards your knee. All right, nose towards knee, I should say. Inhale, reach long one more time. Now exhale, relax the shoulders and head. And then if you want to, that right leg can go down long on the mat. You can hold just with the left arm and open the right out to the side and sort of get out of your way. Notice, are you holding tension because your mind senses danger? If so, a nice mindful breath and a relaxation with awareness of that area is the way to go. Everything that makes contact with the floor should relax. And smooth breathing again. We're going to do the other lying pigeon, so let's bend the right leg again. Lose the strap, uh, left ankle over knee. You can keep it on the floor and just give yourself an assist, wide knee, or thread through a little bit more deeply. My hips probably don't come off the mat. Try to keep those relaxed as well. And I'm flexing this foot here to protect the knee. And maybe that left elbow even helps me open that left knee some. And bring yourself inward. Close the eyes. Take your last deep inhale in the pose. And a deeper exhale. And then let's go ahead and put our feet both flat on the floor, feet flat. And I want to do just a gentle flowing bridge for ourselves today. Remember in the beginning how we, we did an inhale that was inhale in three parts, hold, inhale, hold, inhale, hold. Now we're gonna increase our exhale. So bring your feet in close to your hip joints, right? Nestle your shoulders in just a little bit. And we'll start with an easy flow. Inhale, count of four. As you lift your hips, your arms go overhead. So it's a flowing bridge. And then as you exhale, comes down one vertebra at a time and the hands touch when the hips touch. Try that one more time, smooth it out. Inhale, four. And exhale, four. Now, on your next inhale, keep that at a four. And exhale, count of five. Whatever that is for you. And then inhale, four. And exhale for a count of six. Inhale, four. We're gonna go up to eight. And exhale, seven. There's no hard and fast rule, just so that you're slowing things down. Inhale, four. And notice the relaxation that comes with a long exhale to eight. And once you've finished that exhale to eight, go ahead and rest for just a moment. 
Notice the energetic state of the body. And now because we did that star pose, let's uh, just, this is our last pose. So put your feet, the soles of your feet together and let your knees open wide. Knees open wide, this is our reclining bound angle. If you wanted, if you had two blocks or two blankets, you could also support, this is a lovely way um, to be at the end of class, a support with a block under both knees gives a really nice gentle stretch for the inner thighs. Otherwise the hands can either left rest on the floor or, you know, very gently on the thighs. Good, and we are bringing ourselves towards our final relaxation, our lovely Shavasana, where we will spend a few minutes really um, exploring what it is to be truly relaxed. You can do two Shavasana one of two ways. You could put your feet flat, but then they come wide, and you tip your knees in, okay? You'll always have palms up and the arms away from the body. But when, you know, you gotta find a sweet spot for the knees because you don't want there to feel like there's you know, it's tension to keep them there. You know, maybe the feet got to move a little bit. It should feel like this tipping in is effortless and it just stays there, okay? Otherwise, extend the body long. Again, the arms are just away from the body a bit to allow the air to circulate between the arms and body. Palms up, same, the, uh, are the legs open wide, or just flop to the side, really. And pay attention. Close your eyes and pay attention to where the weight in your body is feeling the gravity of the earth and surrender even more at those places. Now just allowing yourself to become completely relaxed, allowing yourself to feel the soothing energetic effects of your gentle practice. Maybe doing a little body scan internally with your eyes closed. And noticing if there's any place you are holding tension from your practice, letting your shoulders and hips be nice and heavy. Notice if there is softness in the face or can you let the eyes be heavy. And relax the jaw and let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. And one more time, drawing yourself effortlessly onto the quality of your breath. No need to control it during your Shavasana. Just be relaxed. Maybe encourage it to be very long and very smooth. Notice too if your daily thoughts return to you. Does the mind move outward once again? And if so, just imagine that these thoughts are like passers-by while you are sitting maybe in a park someplace and fully relaxed and content. And these passers-by that are your thoughts, giving them just the briefest of acknowledgments and letting them pass by.
and again, not being a judge of anything you experience during your relaxation, allowing your body the time to integrate your practice and for your mind to be free from any stressful thoughts, any activity, letting your thoughts pass by. While you take a seat, what about a place of remove uh, from the seat of the, of the observer, from a place in your higher mind, a place that is separate from your thoughts, houses your intuition, your sense of real truth. And today while we lie here, I would also like to incorporate just a little bit of meditation. And we'll do that all while lying today in keeping with our gentle theme of the practice. And just remaining relaxed and with your eyes closed. I'll ask you now to turn your attention to the touch of the breath in the nostrils. Just observing the flow of air as it passes through the tip of the nose, cooling, and out through the nose, perhaps a little warmed. Just allow yourself to be gently focused on the touch at the nostrils of the inhalation and your exhalation. If any sort of meditative practice is unusual or unfamiliar to you, don't judge yourself. And if you happen to lose focus, just gently relax and follow your breath back in and out, sensing once more your inhale and exhale. Maybe even that point of transition between the breath. Breath that is as it occurs at the nostrils. Let the feeling of your breath become like a resting place for your attention. And let the process gently relax your mind. And I'll add another, just a little focal point for you here, a gentle reminder that keeps us anchored to the present moment we'll silently, internally recite a mantra. And it is, so hum. And so you do it by, when you inhale, think of the sound so. Inhaling so. And when you exhale, think the sound hum. Let each sound flow smoothly into the next. Inhale so. Exhale, hum. And think of this as the mantra that the body makes all on its own. Experience this sound so hum as an internal vibration, the product of your, your being, of your breath, of your prana, your life force moving through you in, so, and out, hum.
training yourself on the internal sound and vibration of the mantra. And other thoughts will come and go, but they are not the focus of your attention. Simply continue to follow the flow of the breath in the nostrils, hearing the sound. So hum. Now take a moment to notice the change in your mind. Does it feel a bit more refreshed, a bit more calmed? Release all techniques and just go ahead and draw a deeper breath, beginning to move gently through your wrists and ankles, through the fingers and toes to wake yourself gently up maintaining your beautiful calm and if it feels all right bring your right arm overhead place it on the floor and turn onto your right side bending the knees and remaining there for two or three breaths allowing that left nostril to open up and that nostril is said to be our moon channel the channel for our cooling side. Whenever you are feeling ready, pressing yourself up to take a comfortable seat where we'll just close our practice. And we'll do that today by bringing our hands to the Anjali Mudra, fingers and palms together, and the thumbs touching at our heart center bowing your chin into your chest, seal your practice. And the light in me honors the light in you. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. If anything felt unusual or difficult, give yourself the grace. Revisit the practice. With time, things can uh, become a lot more familiar and the body responds more quickly than you might think. If you have any questions, go ahead and send me a message. You can find that on my website, again, bluelotusmn.com, or follow me on social media as well. Take care. Hope to see you next time.